give y'all a little back info on this 460. Bought off Marketplace, and this is basically what it looked like when it was brought to me. First thing I noticed, it had head studs, and somebody had spent some money. It's supposed to be a complete engine. They had all these parts just bolted on, had the valve covers on. Intake was on here just like it is now, backwards. There's the thermostat housing, there's the front of the motor. Went to taking, opening it up because I didn't know what it had, was what it had in it. First thing I did, I pulled the intake and noticed there weren't any lifters, any push rods. Pulled the valve cover, we had any rock arms. So basically, somebody finished putting the top end together and I was like, why did they stop? Pulled this off, was trying to spin it to start with and it was tight as hell, tighter and tighter and tighter. Every time I rotated it, it would just get harder and harder to turn. Went to pulling the cam out, because I didn't know if it was a roll cam, a solid lift cam. I wanted to know what it was so we could order the rest of the parts that we needed. First thing I noticed here, it had the eccentric for the fuel pump and it was stuck, it, you couldn't turn it. Put it back together after I found out what cam it was. Still didn't notice this tight. Wasn't ready to put the chain and all on yet. It's easier to just turn the cam. Checking the push rod length versus spinning the whole motor over. But I got this madness. I got a fan spinning this alternator using it as a lathe. Thrust bearing was chewed up. Somebody didn't know what the hell they was doing when they put it in. That's pretty damn good. Well, it's all gouted up. Those right there. It's got a just a little roller bearing. And this was what keeps the cam from walking. Problem was. This is thicker with this Thorrington band in it than what actually comes on it. And you can see right there where those two were. You got a machine of gear to wear. The back side of the cam touches. Now I gotta come up with another way to mount this gear. Here, this was off of a side grinder. Magically, it fit perfect. Fit the hole perfect. I had to enlarge this hole just a smidge. Butter. Tighten it up much. Just use my finger and snug it down and wait. Don't eat the back of the cam. Cam gear up. Look at here, look at here. Oh, there's acting like a rotator table. This was all galled up. This was all galled up. This is supposed to bottom out on the cam and have at least a thousand. But nine is max, so. Basically, I gotta cut some more off this. You can see it, it's already chewed up. So, it's either make it work or throw it in the trash, one of the two. I didn't do it. It's 150 something dollars for this little damn thing. So, I'm trying to save it.
our machinist is at his finest. It's outer edge, you can see the bearing. on the outer edge. And you ain't really got to cut all the way in. I'm gonna keep it square as long as this face ain't touched, you're fine. Get the gist. I'm not gonna sit here and make y'all watch me do this for 20 minutes. I'm gonna try to smooth this up. Get y'all to see. Still a little rough. Of course, I gotta take some more off. So hopefully, I can square this all back up. I don't think I'm gonna use that no more. I'm gonna get some rougher sandpaper to start with. I'm gonna cut some off from that. Do something a little different. Fine tune it. I'll show you the end results when I get done. This was bottoming out. And it had galled this up and galled the, the thrust bearing up. I didn't know that they had put a Thorrington bearing in it. Like I said, I had got to, I didn't know nothing about this block. And obviously they didn't know anything about this either, but it done chewed the cam gear up, chewed the thrust bearing up. So they were basically trash at that point. Pulled this off. I was trying to figure out how to smooth it out. I came up with the alternator idea and just bolted it to the pulley itself. I had to notch it just a little bit where the bolts could clear might be coming in at an angle this was perfectly flat and the bearings basically keep it flat there so it's a pretty good idea and it it worked out it surprised me it worked so good this this back slick i managed to get this on i cut most of it off with the, the little dremel tool slash die grinder Got it down close and then just last bit, it was kind of wavy and the diagram was just tearing it up. Tried to use a flat file, that didn't work too good, so I wound up using just the grinding rock. Got the grinder and I held it with my hand. This was the first one I used because it had that tape where I could get close to the center of the cam and work my way out and gradually work it down and get it back flat. And I'm sure somebody's thinking, oh, there's no way it's flat. Well, it is. And that's basically what it wound up turning out looking like. Put this on. dial indicator on here it's all the way in that's all the way out seven thousandths that flash be fine gears not in line with each other about to eat itself it would have destroyed this motor if I had tried to crank it without doing any of this that's what i'm working with that's what i got going on now no more scrubbing rubbing got a little slack cam gears in line that's dead nuts 
perfectly square with the rest. Shouldn't have any more problems. Should be able to put the time cover back on once I degree the cam. I've already measured for the push rods. Got those coming. So hopefully I can get this thing put together the rest of the way. Pan's got to come off. Got a new pan gasket. This was a new gasket, but it got ripped in the process of taking this timing cover off. Plus, we wanted to see inside. Plus, I don't like the silicone they use. This it's like Yama Bond or something, but worse. It breaks very easily. And it's just got jagglies everywhere. We'll clean all this up a lot better once I get to that point. Yeah, there was dirt. Had yard grass and everything else just laying in here a little bit. Wasn't bad. But you can tell it's been sitting for a minute. And they just basically put the valve covers and intake on just to hide the fact that it didn't have any guts. The rest of the valve train in it. I got most all the other parts. It's basically push rods is the main thing I'm waiting on now and finish all this putting all the thing back together. Another little trick I learned. This lube that you put on the uh, like ring and pinion gears, you just put a little bit on the roller. Gotta drop it on. There's ain't no push rod in here. But basically, you just wiggle it a little bit. As it leaves a mark. Let me see where the see where the rocker arms touching. Putting it on the wheel. Let you see how wide the roller's rolling and everything. Cause it leaves the mark on the, the wheel and the valve. So that works. To me, that works better than the old style ink, Sharpie, whatever. The little lightweight springs. Didn't really have enough pressure to put a good mark on the valve. So I see that is the trick. Try it, you'll like it. This will be running soon. We got the Windsor over here. I may be able to run a stand out of this engine cradle. We got the Windsor over here. Did a little work on it. See y'all on the next one. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I need some subscribers in a bad way. See y'all on the next one.